Okay, so let's start. So I'm going to confine now to SU2 group. SU2 group is now by now you should all know the usual notation of group notation. S denotes the group element should have determinant plus 1. U is for the unitary groups. 2 is to denote the first lowest non-trivial dimension of the representation of the vector space is 2 dimensional. Okay. The corresponding matrices will be 2 cross 2 matrices and the number of constraints if you subtract 2 cross 2 matrices, unitary matrices means it should satisfy unitarity condition and determinant equal to 1. So, you will get the number of parameters which is number of real elements in the matrix. Okay. So, there are only 3 that is why you have theta vector is formally written to remember that there are 3 components theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Okay. So, u of theta so this is for SU2 group once it is a group I try and put it to be capital S capital U and 2. So, this will have an exponential form will be an exponential form i by h cross theta dot the generators. I said no number of parameters will always be equal to the number of generators. In the case of rotation I wrote it as orbital angular momentum. Here I am going to write it as a total angular momentum which includes spin angular momentum and orbital angular momentum of a particle. Okay, so, this will be your general element where j's are the generators. This cap is generally written for a linear operator or you can even write the matrix representations for it depending on which vector space it is going to operate. Okay. So, this This is a familiar algebra of the generators. Algebra is denoted by small s, small u and 2. Okay. This is SU2 Lie algebra. So, how do you define this explicitly? The way to see it is that you could take 2, multiply 2 such matrices. Okay, I am not going to do this for you. Take two such matrices okay. What is the group property required? If you take a product of two such matrices, it should again be an SU2 matrix, but the parameters are not just going to be additive. When will it be additive? If you do a rotation about an axis which is the same, then you can add it up. Okay. But if you do rotation about theta 1 vector which is in a different direction and theta 2 vector in a different direction, it will give you again a unitary matrix which depends on phi. Okay. This is also a vector, but it will depend on theta 1 and theta. Okay. It will be from what exact functional form I will not know, but depending on what is the value I can find. Okay. So, use this, use the infinitesimal piece and keep up to order theta 1, theta 2 and see what you get and you will end up getting this algebra for the generator. Just like I did for the uh, orbital angular momentum, you can do this for this case. Okay. You see that The dimensionality of the vector space depends on 2j plus 1 dimensional vector space. So, I said that j hat 
is 2j plus 1 cross 2j plus 1 matrix acting on vector space which is given formally as you all know this you write it as j and m we will come back to why we add two numbers here but this m value so this m takes values from minus j minus j plus 1 up to j so there are 2j plus 1 states on which this 2j plus 1 cross 2j plus 1 matrix acts you all know this so those are if j is half which is your lowest two dimensional vector space which is up spin and down spin so someone interestingly pointed it out that in your discrete groups the character tables tells you that you have only up to certain dimension irreducible representations, right? So, like if you take a tetrahedral group, you cannot get a phi dimensional irreducible representation. In the case of continuous groups, right, for i j, you still get a irreducible representation, but that irreducible representation acts on the corresponding vector. There is no limit to. There is no analog of character table here, but we will see how to get irreducible depth. Just because I write a 3 cross 3 matrix, it need not be an irreducible depth. You can always, if you are able to find a matrix with block diagonals, then it is not an irreducible depth. But analog of the character table, you can allow all possible dimension irreducible representations for the continuous. Okay, so why are we using this state is something which you have learnt in quantum mechanics. That is what is called as a Casimir operator. What is a Casimir operator? Casimir is bilinear in generators, okay, and it should commute with all the generators of the leaf. So, for example, this j dot j is bilinear in generators, right? I can write it as j1 squared plus j2 squared plus j3 squared and j dot j you can see with any of the j's it is 0 for all i's. So, this tells you that you can write a state which is a simultaneous eigenstate of j dot j as well as any one of the j's. The reason why any one of the j's is because amongst the j1, j2, j3, the commutator is non zero. So, you cannot simultaneously diagonalize j1 as well as j2 or j3. One of them can be simultaneously diagonalized with this one. In all the quantum mechanics textbooks, we use a choice which we call it as JZ, which is this is just a choice. You can write a new book or a new, you know, set of notations where you can call JX to be your axis where this is happening, but usually you are following even in spherical coordinates Z to be the axis which and we choose the jz eigenvalues to be m right what i mean by this is that jz on jm will be mh cross jm okay is that right and j dot j on jm can find the number but uh, if you find it explicitly it turns out to be this 
both are eigen value equations, but if you do j, j x on j m, it is not proportional to j m. Similarly, j y is not proportional to j m. Is that clear? Because of this property and my choice that we are going to take j s to j z to be simultaneously commuting with j dot j. So, this convention which we write j m is a simultaneous eigenstate of a Casimir operator. This is what we call it as a Casimir operator. Casimir operator is one which commutes with all the generators of the group, I am confining to SU2 group, the SU2 group have J1, J2, J3 as the generators. Casimir operator will commute with all the and Casimir is constructed using bilinears of the generators. And then we make a choice and write those states which are simultaneous eigenvalue equations. So, simultaneous eigenstates of this as well as this. Okay. In fact, using this you can also see the matrix representation of it for every j. This I constructed it for j equal to half by showing that it is 1 and minus 1. If you take j equal to 1, you can construct what is the matrix for it. Okay. So, if you want to find jz which is a 3 cross 3 matrix, then you can rewrite it as Because it is an eigenvalue equation, if m is j, it will give you plus 1. If of course, I have suppressed the h cross, if you want, I can put the h cross. And if m is 0, so j, m is running from minus j to plus j. So, if m is j, it is 1, m is 0, it is 0, m is minus j, it gives you minus 1 for j equal to, this corresponds to j equal to 1. Okay. So, some of the notations j equal to 1 is 2j plus 1 dimensional matrices. Okay. So, so the degree of the matrix is 2j plus 1. So, j equal to 1 this will be 3 dimensional matrices. For j x, j y and j z. Okay. Is that clear? Similarly, using these you can see it is off diagonal and you can work out what are those off diagonal matrices for every representation. You do not need to. Every representation I mean different j's corresponds to different representations. Just like any reps, two dimensionally rep, three dimensionally rep. So, each one is 2j plus 1 dimensionally rep. And for different representations, you can use these equations to construct the matrix representation. Is that clear? So, bilinear in generators, bilinear means product of two, two linear operators take a product of two linear operators quadratic. This is the quadratic cousin. Yeah. Is that clear? For example, j dot j. In every group, you will have a set of matrices, matrix representations for the generators, which will be diagonal. Okay. So, if you go to SU3 for example, I want to construct the generators with certain properties for unitary group, special unitary group. What is the properties? It has to be traceless and Hermitian. This is traceless and diagonal also. If I go to SU3, 
So for SU2, if I am going to do, I am going to do only with the lowest non-trivial dimension. For SU3, the lowest non-trivial dimension is 3 cross 3 matrix. So there you can allow one more diagonal matrix, which is traceless. Is that right? So if I write the diagonal matrices, so SU3, how many generators are there? SU3, number of parameters, real parameters is 8, number of generators is 8 and I am going to denote it as lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda i. Just like J1, J2, J3 you will have 8 such matrices. Any element G belonging to SU3 will be rewritable as exponential of I by S cross phi which is 8 of the matrix. This I am going to put phi i lambda i hat summation over i going from 1 to 8. Are you all with me? That is the model. These are the SU3, SU3 matrices which involves 8 generators and there will be an algebra between the 8 generators. What will the algebra be? It will be from lambda i with lambda j. Should give me some structure constant. This is the SU3 algebra. Okay. Okay. This is the group element, which is an exponential of the generators, and there are eight parameters and eight generators, and the lowest non-trivial dimension has to be dictated by this. Okay, so you can write lambda hat the lowest one just like we wrote for SU2 as poly matrices. Here you have a set of matrices which are 3 cross 3 matrices. Okay, lambda i's are 3 cross 3, and the aim is to find traceless Hermitian matrices. <coughs> 3 cross 3, which is traceless whatever you write here you understand what I am saying right the generators have to be traceless and Hermitian and from there you found that the number of parameters will be 9 and then you traceless and Hermitian will have Number of parameters 8, right. So it is 1, 2, which are real. Then these are complex conjugates. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8. Complex numbers have 2, but this element is independent, it is not independent. So 2 reals A, B, Z1, Z2. Z3 are the independent parameters required to specify a traceless Hermitian matrix. So, there are 8 number of real elements. These are complex. So, 6, 7, 8. Okay, is that clear? So, 8 real elements. That is why 8 parameters. Hmm. Now, I want to construct the analog of Jz which I did for SU2. The poly matrix sigma Z was diagonal. How many diagonal matrices I can construct for the lowest non-trivial representation of SU3? 
So tell me how many are possible. First of all, inside SU3, SU2 will be a subgroup. Okay, that is something which you should know that any element of SU3, you could write the elements which is, so SU2 is definitely a subgroup of SU3. Okay, so the conventional generator which you have for sigma z, which was plus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, this should sit inside the SU3 generator as one diagonal generator. So, let me call the generator for conventional reason just like we call that as J3. So, lambda 3 should be a 3 cross 3 matrix for SU3. So, this is an element of SU2 algebra. So, this 3 cross 3 will be 1. So, this one is an element of SU3. This is traceless and Hermitian. Can we construct one more? It is the next question. So, it turns out that for 3 cross 3, you have one more diagonal generator which you could construct because of this 3 cross 3 freedom. Okay, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to do. It is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 2. Okay. And then you go to SU4. Now tell me what is the procedure by induction. These two should sit inside SU4. You will definitely have rank 2. Thus, sorry, you will definitely have two diagonal matrices and you could also construct one more. Okay, so that is the chain process by induction where I have told you that there is one diagonal generator for SU2 and that is sitting inside this and then you can construct one more. In the literature, we call those diagonal generators with the subscript 3 and subscript 8 for these lambda matrices. Incidentally, these like poly matrices, the name which is given to this, this was initiated by Gelman when he was looking at the particle data. Okay. So, just like your periodic table, there is also in particle physics, you can call it as a particle zoo. Protons, neutrons are simple ones, but there are other particles. He just looked at their charges, looked at their angular momentums and he saw their masses and he grouped them. And he said these groups are looking like irreducible representations. I should find a theory to explain it. So, he started working on this uh, extension of this unitary SU2 group to SU3 and he exactly fitted every particle with whatever nature has told us in a beautiful fashion. We will, we will see this to appreciate how much group theory actually speaks physics. Okay? So, in that sense, since he started doing this, I think this these are the matrices which now is well known as Gelman matrices. Just like poly matrices, these are called Gel Gelman matrices. So, recently he passed away. He was the one who got the Nobel Prize for this quark model saying that protons, neutrons are all made of three quarks. So, three quarks in our group theory language should be seen as tensor product of three primary basis and look at the irreducible representations of a tensor product of three fundamental, three initial representations, okay. Three reps will give you the composition and then you break it up and you will see. That. We will do this just to see how the clarity on SU3 particle physics is. Mm -hmm.